How similar are you to your mother or your father? Of course, we're all different. We are not clones of one another. It's, we, it's cultural hypocrisy. So don't teach your kids to be hypocrites because they learn it from you. If they... So my brothers and sisters, take a careful look at how you talk to your own children. How you interact with them. How much time do you give them? It is important. That is an act of worship. To say good words to your children is a very great act of worship. One because day... these 15, 16 years old are treated like kids, they act like kids. They act like kids because we treat them like kids. And the final point I want to ask the parents to think about. I want you to think about a simple, again, human phenomenon. No doubt it's a part of our nature. We want our children to be like us as much as possible. We want them to keep our ways and our tradition. But I ask you an honest question. How similar are you to your mother or your father? Your mother or your father, are, they, are you exactly like them? Or are you a little bit different or are you very different? Of course, we're all different. We are not clones of one another. And so if you, being a product of the same culture and the same civilization of your mother and father turned out so different from them, what do you think of somebody who's been born and raised in a culture that is radically different than the one you grew up in? It's not going to happen. And when you try to demand it, you're only asking for trouble. Be realistic, be pragmatic. And this is a huge issue, this culture basically clash. You as an immigrant have never been treated by your parents the way that us as a second generation expect our parents to treat us. What I'm trying to say is basically the way that our peers in the western part of the world, Americans, are treated by their parents, our parents never treated us like that. That's never happened. We see the other kids and what their parents do with them. We know our parents don't do that to us. And that does affect us some, at some subconscious level. Understand, you're not living in the world that you grew up in. It's a very different world. Over here, parents spend time with their kids, take them to the ball game, do this, do that. That was not a culture that our grandparents did with our parents. It was a very different world. When we see other kids, their parents doing that with them, spending time with them, taking stuff, you know, ridiculous things for us sometimes, but it's that concept of I care about you. I want to spend time with you. I want you to have a good time as well. When we see that, wallahi, the fact of the matter, you feel, how come my parents don't do that with me? Then you realize it's our culture. You see, subhanAllah, I, I just want to end with a, another personal story. I remember a brother, and I know this is sensitive, and if you guys don't invite me, I'll understand why, again, after, after I answer this question, because I know people usually don't like this. But we have to have a brother brotherly sister sisterly relationship where we talk to each other where we advise each other this is sincere nasiha wallah don't be a, your kids can sniff hypocrisy there is a brother a, a good friend of mine who got caught up selling marijuana and later on i became an imam he came out of jail after years and his father brought him to me to tell him why what he did was wrong and before i started talking he goes bro tell me something he says is selling marijuana worse than selling alcohol I said, no. He said, but my father sells alcohol. And then his father said, no, 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 but it's legal. I'm just selling alcohol to the kuffar. It's legal. What you did is illegal. You're the one who went to prison. He said, wait, so is the law of the land superseding the law of God now? He called him out. He put him on the spot. If you're telling your kids not to go to prom and not to hang out and not to do this and not to date and things of that sort, but then your kids see you at the Eid Milan, i.e. welcome back shaitan party, and you're hugging up on auntie, you're hugging up on uncle, and you guys are getting all acquainted with each other, then he's going to say, hey, you know, you do the same thing, right? It's, we, it's cultural hypocrisy. So don't teach your kids to be hypocrites because they learn it from you. If they, they end up being two-faced because they saw that you learned how to play the game too. You learned how to play the religion too. To where you're Muslim in the masjid. To where when the Qur'an is being read, everyone gets religious and things of that sort. And then as soon as the Qur'an is not being read, it's back to party time. They learn that hypocrisy from the parents. They sniff it out. They observe. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from being exposed in front of our children. Allahumma ameen. So my brothers and sisters, take a careful look at how you talk to your own children, how you interact with them, how much time do you give them, it is important. That is an act of worship. It is an act of worship. Teach them mannerism to begin with through following your example.
So sometimes in some homes there is not much of instruction dished out by the father or the mother. There is more following example. They watch your etiquette and mannerism of eating and they will follow suit. Do you know that? So if you start with Bismillah before you eat and you make it loud and clear, they will also say Bismillah before they eat. Sometimes you did not yet tell them anything, but you touch their lives in a beautiful way. So they just follow. You read your Salah on time. The Adhan goes, everything stops. You touch the lives of your child. They will learn without you instructing them that the time of Adhan, they will give up whatever they are doing and they will come towards the Salah. They will fulfill it. This is why I always say you find a one year old child getting into sujood because mom reads Salah because mom is in sujood. And this is why you find little children wanting to dress like their parents. You know, a lot of us, subhanAllah, on a Friday, we like to dress with a thob, what is known as a kandura. We like to dress with a thob. You find your little children will say, Dad, I want to wear the same thing. I want to wear the same thing. Why? Because they, f they feel automatically a connection to you. How do you touch the lives? Now, to, in order to be able to be the most effective with your children, you need to watch how you are with your spouse. Amazing. Look at the connection. Everything is connected. If I want to be effective with my children, I need to make sure that with my own wife, I am so decent that when my child grows up, he will know how to interact with the opposite sex. He will know what the mother is all about, what a wife is all about. He will know that you have to talk to her with respect. He will know that you are not allowed to scream and yell at your spouse. It's something important, something good to learn. Remember to use your tongue just like dhikr of Allah is a very great act of worship to say good words to your children is a very great act of worship. One day the Prophet ﷺ kissed Al Hasan ibn Ali radiallahu an when he was a baby. That was his grandson. So Al Aqra ibn Habis was sitting near him and he says you kissed your grandson. I have 10 of them. I haven't kissed even one. The Prophet says man la yarham la yurham. Whoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. These are my children. These are my grandchildren. I will kiss them. So to kiss your children is a sunnah. It's an act of worship. It is an act of worship. Any person who's 15 or above, I talk to them like an adult. I treat them like an adult. And sometimes they're a bit shocked because they're not used to that treatment. Because these 15, 16 years old are treated like kids, they act like kids. They act like kids because we treat them like kids. Treat them like an adult. And it's gonna take a while because they're not used to it. But give them that intellectual respect. Sit down and have an intellectual conversation with them like you would with an adult. Tell them about your life. Tell them what's happening in the world and automatically your son or daughter will mature. Stop treating them like kids because they are no longer children. And if that's the case when they're 14, well then by the time they're nine or 10, you better start laying the foundations for that. This is in my humble opinion, one of the biggest negative of this culture we live in is that they always want to make children more immature than they are. And our Sharia tells us to treat our children more mature. Make them basically think maturely and act maturely. So this is the second point. Treat your kids with maturity. Treat your kids as, as not equals, it's not going to happen, but treat them with the respect and the intellectual maturity that they deserve.